for all that you've done for me. Cause Jesus, to fully praise you, oh, it will take all eternity, just like Lazarus.
precious mom whose strong faith paved the way for me seeing who Jesus really is. I'm a mom and a couple years ago I even got blessed with being a grandmother which is amazing. I feel like it's God's reward. Yeah, right? 
It's God's reward for all those hard days of motherhood. So I'm so glad that you're here. We wanna welcome all of our moms and there's so many ways that we can enter motherhood, maybe through fostering or adoption, maybe through stepping up for a mom who couldn't be there for her children, or maybe you're a spiritual mom and you just love investing in that younger generation. What's cool about that is it doesn't matter if we're connected by blood or by choice or by faith, the one common denominator is the influence, the powerful influence of a mother, right? Amen, there's so much power there, y'all. So I wanna encourage you today as we celebrate our moms that we wanna never underestimate the powerful influence of a mother. We wanna never stop speaking truth and life over our children. We wanna never give up on their future. We always wanna believe in their future and we never ever wanna stop partnering with the Holy Spirit to call out the full potential and purpose of each of our children. So today, let's celebrate our moms. Woo! We love you moms. And on the way out for all of the ladies in the house, every lady, we have a special gift for you as you leave. So please celebrate that with us. So as we talk about the power of uh, a mother to change the life of her child, we also wanna talk about the transformation that happens when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. And we believe the outward reflection of that, the outward demonstration is baptism. That's the outward demonstration of what we've chosen as an inner choice in our heart. So we have a class about baptism. It's gonna be next Sunday, 10.30 in the theater. And we would love for you to join us if you haven't been baptized. Maybe you just chose Jesus. Maybe you uh, chose Jesus a while back, but you didn't get baptized. Or maybe you're just curious about what baptism is. We would love for you to join us next week. You can sign up at cityhope.cc slash baptism. And the cool thing about the class is it's going to explain why we believe baptism is important. What it's about. It's even going to give you a little space to kind of understand how Jesus is telling a story through your life. So I hope you'll join us for that next week. So if you're brand new today, or if you're new, but you haven't really connected, you have been coming a little while and haven't made City Hope your home, we would love to get to know you a little bit. So reach into your seat back, grab that connect card, or in the risers, grab the one that's alongside your seat, fill out that card, drop it in the tithing offering boxes on your way out, or better yet, talk to a real live person out in the lobby at one of our two connect desks. Y'all, we're just so glad you're here. Today, we're so expectant for what God's gonna say to us. So let's be ready and happy Mother's Day. Welcome to church. Man, you guys look really, really amazing today. Like you dressed up for somebody. Is there a chance that you dressed up, you got all cleaned up today for mom, right? You guys look absolutely, absolutely amazing. Hey, listen, before, um, before I talk a little bit about Mother's Day, let me just welcome the rest of our church family real quick. And you guys can help me do that. Mobile Campus, Foley, Correctional Center campuses, everybody watching online, but hang on. I got one more right now at the Jungle Hospital in Honduras. We've got a whole bunch of our men are there on a mission trip. So let's welcome them today as well.
wherever, wherever you're watching from. We're so glad that you're with us today on this amazing, amazing Mother's Day. Um, and welcome. Man, I'm so glad that you're here today. What a special and amazing day for us to get to celebrate women, moms, grandmoms, just however that looks to you. We're so glad that you're here, that you're celebrating with us. Um, I get to also, because I have the microphone, I get to also just thank my mom, um, who's an incredible, incredible mom, and my wife, who is an incredible, incredible mom to my children. So um, both of them are watching right now. So let me just say happy Mother's Day to them. Um, I love them so, so much, and they are both so incredible. Um, And today we also have to kind of pause for a moment and just acknowledge that today isn't always the happiest of days for everyone. Um, And I think it's important that we always kind of stop and acknowledge that. Um, Sometimes we can forget and we can kind of blow past that, that today can be hard for some. You know, through loss, you may be grieving or maybe this brings back up old pain or old grief, or maybe you've struggled to get pregnant or to be a mom. And so we understand and we completely acknowledge that today is also for some kind of bittersweet. It can be difficult. Um, And I just want you to know if that's you, if that's your story and that's where you're at today, you are loved. You are so, so loved. And we're so glad that you're here um, because probably this morning there was a voice in your head that said, do not go to church today. Today's not the day to go to church, but you did. And, um, And I just wanna say you're loved and we honor you. We love you so, so much. And really, as a church family, I feel honored that, that, that we get to walk alongside you, even in difficulty, because that's what family's all about, right? We're going to walk with you in that, and so we love you so, so much. Hey, listen, before I jump in, we're going to pick up with peace of mind here in just a second. Before I do that, can we just pray a prayer of blessing over moms, over all women? We've already actually sang a blessing over everyone today, which was beautiful. Um, but let's take a second and pray. So guys... All the guys, I want to kind of hear you praying today, wherever you are. I want to hear you pray as we bless all of the women, the moms, the ladies in our lives, the amazing blessing that they are to this family. Let's pray that, okay? Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much, Lord, for every mom and every grandmother. Um, God, whatever that looks like, Lord, I just pray and I thank you for them, the calling, the God, the, 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 the honor, God, the thing that you're doing in them as they influence those around them. And God, we lift up everyone today that could be struggling and dealing with something difficult or hard. And God, we just pray your blessing over them as well. God, that you would wrap your arms of love around them, that they would feel so loved and cared for, that they would trust you in their difficulty, in their struggle, that today they would trust you. And God, that they, know, that they would know they have a family around them that support them and love them. God, we love you so much. We pray blessings over every woman. God, no matter the age, no matter the stage, we pray your blessing, God, that you would smile upon them today, that you would grant them peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. All right, well, we're gonna pick up in, uh, in our series, Peace of Mind. We took a little bit of a pause last week and we're gonna kind of jump right back in this week. And we're just simply talking about peace and what does that look like today? Because we know that Jesus promised peace. And the peace that Jesus promised isn't just for one day. It's not just for eternity. It's not just for this, you know, the by and by and the the, the great beyond, which praise the Lord is gonna be incredible. But really Jesus is talking about peace now in the here and now, which is why he sent the Holy Spirit, which is why he promises to be with us every single day. And so that's really what we've been talking about. How do we experience that here and now? And so today what I want to talk about is I want to talk about how do we find rest and renewal in the midst of one of the most exhausting and stressful times that has ever existed, right? How do we find like rest and renewal for our emotions, for our mind, for our heart, for our body, for our spirit in this kind of time? Because so much of what we're dealing with in our mental health and our issues ties back to the way we run ourselves, the exhaustion that we feel. And it's interesting to me because this subject of just simply rest and renewal and the way the rhythms that God has built into us and into the world and into kind of following him, it's so interesting to me because Jesus cares just as much about rest and renewal in your life as he does all the big heavy topics that we've talked about. You know, we've talked about depression and anxiety. We've talked about these big, massive, heavy things. And what I want you to know is that Jesus cares and is so specific, even when it comes to rest and renewal, as he is about those things. That when it comes to obedience, when it comes to following God, this is really, really important. 
Because our tendency is, our tendency is to kind of do things our own way. Have you ever noticed that? Right, we just, we just have this tendency, right? That, that we're, gonna, we're gonna know better. We're gonna, we're gonna have a better way. We're gonna follow something else, even though God has a way. And what happens whenever we do that, whenever we go our own way, whenever we kind of cheat the system a little bit and we go, okay, God, I know that that's how you designed it, but I'm gonna do my own thing this other way. What happens is, is that we pay for it. We are the ones that end up dealing with that. And we deal with that through burnout and exhaustion, stress, just anger, right? Because we're depleted, because emotionally we're depleted or just being discouraged, being frustrated, being fatigued, being wanting to withdraw and be isolated, right? All because of the way we run our lives to the point that every meter on the dashboard of our life is at E. We're just running on empty. And what I believe God has for us today is for us to kind of understand his rhythm of rest and renewal that he wants for each and every one of our lives to bring his peace into our life, to refuel us and refill us. Because the thing is right now, the world, everything around us has a rhythm to it. And that rhythm is fast, that rhythm is quick, that rhythm is all over the place. But at the same time, there's this other beat, there's this other rhythm that God's called us to live to. And that's what we're after. And if we were, if we were doing this series you know, 10, 15 years ago, about rest and renewal, we would mainly be talking about the busyness and the hurriedness and the busy schedule. But today in this time, we're actually not just talking about our busy schedule, we're actually talking about our distracted minds. So much of what we're dealing with is not just busyness and hurriedness, it's our distractions. Right now in the, in, in the US, the average American spends almost four hours a day looking at their phone. Think about that, four hours a day looking at your phone. Studies tell us right now that the average American touches their phone over 2,600 times a day. You're just, it's, it's another appendage. Right? It's a part of us. It's become a part of us. And we're constantly distracted. There's one Microsoft researcher by the name of Linda Stone. She says it this way, that continuous partial attention is the new norm. That in every area of life, you, have, you are not giving it full attention. Because continuously, your partial attention is on something else. Right? There's something else happening and it's distracting us and it's draining us and it's ultimately ruining our lives. So just to kind of start this off, I thought we would just kind of get on a level playing field because this is one subject that my guess is is gonna, it's probably hitting most of us, okay? We talked about some big subjects, big topics and maybe it's pockets of the room here and there or seasons, but for the most part, this is gonna impact a lot of us. So I wanna do kind of a quick kind of a quick pop quiz, but in doing this, really what I'm doing is I'm giving you an opportunity. This is kind of like a mass confessional, okay? Because what I want you to do is I want you just to kind of let some things off your chest today. I want you just to kind of relax a little bit, shake it off, and just understand that you're in good company, okay? You're with friends, okay? So if it's a yes, just simply raise your hand, okay? Here's the first one. Um, I've cut through a gas station to avoid stopping at a red light. Let's go, come on, let's be real. <laughs> How many of you did this morning, right? This morning on the way to church, like, let's like, come on, you know, you know, that's you. Okay, here's, here's another one. Just when I use the restroom, I like to take my phone with me. Okay, okay, look around. I wonder what the average bathroom break, like the time has gone up, right? <laughs> right, like we're we, like, well, I'm just not gonna go until I have my phone, right? It, like, okay, that's too much information, okay. Here's three. I often look at multiple screens at the same time, right? You got the TV going, you got the phone out, you got the computer out. You see this? Like every hand's up, like you feeling this. Okay, here's four. People who talk slowly irritate me. <laughs> just put it in one sentence, man. Like, just let's go. Okay, five. I often switch lines because I think this one is too slow. When I'm at the grocery store, it is an Olympic sport, right? I'm timing this puppy. I'm timing this thing. And when I'm getting to the line, I'm not just counting the items in the carts. 
right? Like Rain Man style, like just counting the cards. No, I'm also full honesty here. I'm fully judging the checker. Because if they're chatty Kathy, I'm not going to that line. Like we got a plan here. There's a thing we're trying to, right? But I will say this, if you ever see me in a line, pick the other line because somehow it always ends up being the slowest line, <laughs> right? How in the world does that happen? Okay, number six, um, I look at my phone while stopped at a red light. Come on, listen to this. I, this is actual data. 77% of Americans look at their phone while sitting at a red light. Okay, it's just habit. It's just kind of what we do. Okay, last one, number seven. Um, I feel compelled to leave church early to beat the parking lot rush. And honestly, you don't have to raise your hand because we know who you are. And so does God. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. I could not do this mass confessional with any other topic, right? We could not do this on addictions. We could not do this on depression or anxiety. Like we can't, this is like the only subject we can do this is this subject. Why? Because it's something we all deal with, right? It's something, not only do we all deal with it, but it's almost acceptable, right? There's almost like, a, there's almost like it's normal. And even to some degree, even though it's like, oh my goodness, yeah, that's me. There's even kind of this little bit of a badge of honor, right? That running ragged, being quick, accomplishing a lot, running faster and harder and getting more done is something that we almost feel good about. But you don't have to look very far to find out that this kind of lifestyle is what's leading us to the anxiety, the depression, the burnout, the things that we're dealing with. There's no margin, there's no space. This is not the way God designed us to live, built us. There's a, there's a rhythm, there's a beat, and that's what I wanna look at. I just wanna look at two things. Two things ultimately about God that I want you to see, I want you to understand God, but I want you to see in light of that, how you were made and how you and I were wired to operate within that. Okay, so here's the first thing that I want you to understand about God. Number one is that God is creator. God is creator. When you go back to Genesis one, what you see is that in the very beginning in creation, God designed a certain rhythm, a certain beat to life. And everything is meant to operate according to that. And you see that not only in our lives, but you see that in nature. You see that with the, the lunar cycles and the seasons and time and all these things that like God literally designed everything to work a certain way. He designed you and I to work a certain way. He designed that for us. Even in the Old Testament, when you go back and you look at the law, what you see with the law is that so much of what God did in orchestrating with his people had to do with going all the way back to Genesis and seeing the rhythms and the beats and the way that God designed us to live. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to Genesis one and we're gonna read a few verses. And what I, what I want you to see is I want you just to pick up the rhythm. I want you to pick up the beat. As a matter, I, I kind of wish I thought ahead and I had a drummer or a beatboxer on stage. Wouldn't that be cool? I wish I was like, you know that guy that can beatbox and play cello at the same time? I wish I could beatbox and read at the same time, but I can't. But I want you just to kind of picture, I want you to kind of feel this beat and this rhythm that emerges through the poetry of Genesis 1. Look at this, we'll start in verse three. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and, the, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Then we read, so here God creates day and night, and then we read that God creates the sky and the water, and then verse eight, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And then God creates land and vegetation, and then there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And then God creates sun and moon to govern the day and the night, and then there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And then he created fish, for the water and birds for the air. And then there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And then he created land animals. He created man and woman 
And then God saw that all he had made was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And then Genesis 2, 3, it says this, then God blessed the seventh day, made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And you just see this rhythm and this pattern and this way, evening and morning, evening and morning, evening and morning. And he repeats, it was good, it was good. There's just this beat, there's this rhythm to it that you and I are meant to live by. As a matter of fact, whenever the children of Israel came out of slavery, they, they were in slavery for 400 years. Okay, they were, they were living according to a different rhythm and a different beat. They were living according to a, a worldly system. One of the very first things God does when he pulls them out is he gives them a law to live by. And in that law, what he's teaching them is how to be his people. That's ultimately what the law is. And I know sometimes the law kind of gets a bad rap for good reasons, because in, when Jesus came in, he fulfilled the law. But what God was doing is he was trying to restore the human project. He was trying to get the human project back on track. They've been in slavery. He brings them out and he says, hey, let me, let me teach you how to be a human being according to my ways. And in the law, God actually instituted three different types of rhythms. Rhythms of how we're supposed to live. The first one were daily rhythms. He set up daily rhythms and we read it a moment ago, the evening and morning, evening and morning. So Jewish people, every evening and every morning and at meal times, they would pause, they would rest, not long, but it was meaningful times every single day, three, four, five times a day to stop, to pause, to, to focus their attention to God, to be grateful grateful of God's faithfulness and who God was, but, but the evening and morning and meal times, they would just simply stop, reflect and rest. And I wondered for us, like just getting in some sort of a pattern, what, what would that look like for us to get into a similar pattern, pattern where we just simply find times throughout our, our day to rest? And I know a lot of us probably do a morning quiet time. We get up and we spend some time with God. But what about throughout the day? Do we have a, a rhythm of rest throughout the day where we, we stop in the busyness, we stop in the hustle and the bustle, and we just thank God? There's this concept called habit stacking. And I absolutely, I, I love this concept because basically what it is, it's, it's when you find something that you do regularly, consistently, that doesn't require a lot of energy, and then you stack a habit on top of it. Here's what I'm talking about. One of, the, one of the things that I love to do is anytime I'm in my car and I'm driving, right? It doesn't take a whole lot of energy. It's, it's, some of you have a, a morning commute, a daily commute. What if you stacked on top of that thankfulness and worship? right? Hopefully we all take a shower every day, right? What if in that moment of taking a shower, like there's no extra energy, you're not having to think about it. You just kind of do the thing. What if you, what if you stacked on top of that a moment of praise, a moment of great, of, of gratefulness, a moment of just stopping and thinking about praying to God. What about brushing your teeth, man? Isn't that supposed to be like three or four minutes long? Something like that. I don't know. Mine are like 30 seconds, but like, right. It's supposed to be like, a like you don't think about it. But what if in that time every day you just said, I'm gonna take a moment right here and I'm gonna actually think about God. Because it didn't, it didn't require anything of me to brush my teeth. I can just stop and think about God. What if you just begin to build in moments like that throughout your day? How would that change everything? Right, just even moments of, of leaving one meeting and going to the next meeting and you say between meetings, I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna, I'm gonna inhale, I'm gonna exhale. I'm gonna just thank God for his goodness. Right? So daily rhythms, there's this beat, there's this pattern of daily rhythms, but then there's also weekly rhythms. If you notice in the Genesis 1 account, Jesus, I mean, God created rest on the seventh day. He created rest on the seventh day. What that means for you and I is really significant. It means that our humanity's first day of existence, okay, day six, man was created and given the, the commissioning to go and build the world go and multiply, go and subdue, go and rule this earth. There's this incredible mission, incredible work to be done, but the very first day of humanity's existence was a rest day. Think about that. Why? Because all of our work, everything that we do for God should come out of our rest. If you notice, even in this rhythm and this pattern, it's evening, then morning. We don't think of it that way. We say morning, then evening. But in God's mind, it's evening and then morning. Why? Because rest comes before productivity. Resting in God, 
right? And so God instituted a Sabbath, a seventh day of rest, right? And that's important. It's so important, as a matter of fact, that it even made his top 10 list. If you didn't know, it's in the 10 commandments to take a Sabbath, right? Why? Because it's part of God's rhythm. It's part of the way God created us to operate. And whenever we don't operate that way, we get drained. And a Sabbath, by the way, isn't lazy on the couch, binge watching Netflix and scrolling Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Like that's not replenishing your soul. Okay, disconnecting from those things, sleep, rest, family time, um, worship time, laughing, doing things that you enjoy that actually replenish your soul. That's what Sabbath is all about, right? It's, it's taking intentional time to replenish you. There was a study done by National Geographic uh, years ago, they were studying, they were trying to find the, the people groups on earth that live the longest. Okay, they're, they're look, all over the world. They found a subculture within America that on average lived 10 years longer than anybody else in America, 10 years longer. They were the Seventh-day Adventists. And you may be familiar with that tradition, but Seventh-day Adventists are very strict, almost religious about keeping the Sabbath about taking a day completely off without any other distractions. They're very, so 10 years were added onto their life because they took a Sabbath. And if you did the math really quick, you would realize that if you were to add up one day a week for a lifetime, guess how what it adds up to? 10 years. Isn't that wild? Why? Because it's the way God built it. It's the way God designed us to live. Right, where we're not living life at the absolute edge, we're living life with margin, we're living life where we have time to rest and reflect in God's goodness and his grace. And Jesus said this in Mark two, he said to them, he said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Because at this point, they, they were put, they, the Sabbath had become a weight on the people of Israel, a burden on them. And Jesus said, no, no, no y'all got this thing all wrong. God created this because he loves you. God created this because he wants you to be healthy. God created this because he wants you to be full of life and joy and peace. That's why he created the Sabbath. It's not an obligation. It's something you get to do that leads to peace and joy and life. It's because he loves you. So there's daily rhythms, there's weekly rhythms, and then he created yearly rhythms, which is the festivals and the feast. And I won't go into detail with these, but um, the, the, the feast of... Um, Passover and weeks or Pentecost and all the different festivals and feasts, but there were times where the people of God would take a break for days on end to just go and celebrate God, okay? But here's what I want you to see. I want you to see the intentionality behind God's plan. God is the creator, you are the creation, okay? You fit within his world, within his way. And whenever we operate according to his way, guess what? Our life goes better, because it's how he created it. He's the creator and we're the creation. Now, here's what I know. I know that most of us don't have any problem with this concept whatsoever. Most of us are like, great idea. This is awesome. This sounds incredible. But then when it gets down to kind of the, kind of the practicality of it, and we start going, yeah, but if I take that time off and if I put my phone down and if I, if I live according to these type of rhythms, then... My business is gonna fall apart. My family's gonna fall apart. My world's gonna fall apart. All of a sudden, I'm not gonna be able to keep everything going the way it's going. And I know that's kind of where our mind naturally goes. We start thinking about the practical side of it. Sounds great, but in, in reality, this is really, really hard, but that is actually making the point. Okay, because whenever we learn to, to rest and are renewed according to God's rhythms, what it's doing is it's teaching us that we are not God that your world will not fall apart because your hands are not on it because you are not in control of your world, right? What it does is it gives us an opportunity to take our hands off and actually see God move. When your hands are on everything and it's all about you and your control and your ability, you can't see when God shows up and God does something or God can't show up and do something because your little hands are all over it, right? But whenever we take our hands off, <clears throat> It's, it's ultimately about trust. It's about, it's about you saying, God, I, I don't belong in that seat. You know how much of our mental and emotional issues are because we're in the wrong seat? We think control 
of our life is up to us and us alone. That's a problem, right? Perfection, it's gotta be perfect, it's gotta be right. Guess what, that's not your job. Right? We've put ourselves in the wrong seat. And what this does when we rest and we understand the rhythms of God's rest and renewal, what it does is it takes us out of that seat and it says, God, please take that seat. I can trust you in this season of my life. You know what? God even takes this further with his children. In Leviticus 25, he actually tells them to, to take a Sabbath year in which they do not plant or harvest crops for one entire year. It's the seventh year. On the seventh year, don't plant and don't harvest, literally nothing, which was very difficult because everything that they depended on came from the ground, right? This was an, very much an agricultural society. So everything was dependent on that. And yet God said, hey, listen, on the seventh year, no planting and no harvesting, okay? Le- uh, Leviticus 25, 20 says, you may ask. Yes, I was actually going to ask. What will will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant or harvest our crops? Everybody's asking that question, right? And God says, let me go ahead and say, this is what you're gonna ask. This is what you're wondering. Verse 21, I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years. While you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the old crop and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth year comes in. Okay, now it's interesting. Now, scientifically, we know this is, this is the way, this is what's healthy for land. Land needs to breathe. It needs a break. Of course, they didn't know that then. So they're literally just trusting God or they're supposed to just trust God in this, that this is what's actually better and we're gonna produce healthier crop whenever we do this. This is what God's saying. Listen, you just gotta, you just gotta trust me. And what's gonna happen when you trust me, you're gonna find out that you're not the provider, I'm the provider. You could look at rest like this. Rest is a lot like giving, generosity, right? Whenever we give, what are we doing whenever we give? We are literally saying, me, my money, my, I am not the provider, God, I'm trusting you. I'm, I'm, I'm literally with, I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I'm saying, God, you're my provider. I'm trusting you in this. It's the same thing with rest. Whenever we take our hands off of it, what we're saying is, God, you're the provider. You're my provider. I don't have to control. I don't have to have everything figured out because you're my provider. It's the same thing. It's an act of trust. It's an act of dependence. It's literally saying it's not on me, it's on you. And trusting God in that. So that's number one, God is creator. Here's the second one. It'll be a little bit quicker, I promise. The second one is this, God is shepherd. God is shepherd. And it's just another lens. It's another angle for us to see God. See God in this and understand how he created you and I. Psalm 23, which is by far one of the most famous passages in the Bible, starts this way. David writes this, I, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Now we know this is later in David's life, okay? And this is what he's saying. He's saying, the Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. I think one of the reasons why we struggle so much with understanding rest, God's way, is because we are convinced that we lack something. We we are motivated by what we think we lack. And it drives us to fill that void, to fill that gap. Maybe you feel like you lack respect. And so what do you do? You strive, you work harder, you work 60, 70 hours a week. You try to go from promotion to promotion to promotion. Why? Because you're trying to get respect or approval. Maybe you lack approval or affirmation from a parent or a dad. And so what you do is you strive and you go after it and you're looking for attaboys. You're looking for pats on the back. Why? Because you feel as though you lack something or or maybe as a mom. Right now, we live in the world of mom shaming and this, this kind of perfection. Every mom's supposed to be perfect. And yet you, maybe you feel like you lack something. And so there's this, there's this desire to become a perfect mom and to get everything right and to work hard and to just spin every plate you can to get there because you feel like you're lacking something. Maybe it's perfection. Maybe it's control. Maybe it's money. You feel like you just lack enough money. You lack the bigger house. You lack the newer car. Or every single time you open up social media, which by the way, is just simply this kind of, this announcement engine of everything that you lack. 
right? Every time you open up social media, all it does is scream, oh, you don't have a great vacation like they do. Oh, you don't have the great house, the great car, the great kids, and everybody looks so good. Like you don't have everything they have, or you don't have the six pack abs, or you don't have the, you know, the perfect skin, or you don't have the tickets to that event, or you don't have those friends, or you don't have that kind of privilege or that kind of thing. And all it does is scream what you lack. And so what do we do? We just strive and we work harder and harder and we do whatever we can do to, to, to kind of make up the space and to get the thing that we feel like we lack. And here's what David is saying, what David has understood, what David knows is he understands that the Lord is his shepherd. What he's saying is, I understand that fully, that God is my shepherd. Therefore, I lack no thing. Because I fully understand who God is, that God is my shepherd, not me. Listen, you weren't, you're not qualified to be a shepherd because you weren't built to be a shepherd. You were built to be the sheep, right? We were built to be a sheep that follows a shepherd, a good shepherd. What does a shepherd do? A shepherd provides, a shepherd protects, a shepherd controls, a shepherd like fixes and, 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 and restores and, and, and replenishes. <clears throat> That's what a shepherd does. You and I just get to be sheep. We just get to be sheep. We just get to follow a good shepherd. What that means is it's not all on my shoulders. Whatever you think you lack, you only lack it because you think you lack it. If you actually lacked it, then God would provide it. Why? Because he's a good shepherd. And then David goes on in verse two, and he says, and he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Again, David is on in years. He's lived, he's experienced a lot. He's experienced this first part that he makes me lie down in green pastures. Sometimes we just kind of read right past that. But what it's saying is that the shepherd isn't just saying, hey, listen, if you feel like it, take a nap. Hey, if it's a good day for it, go ahead and lay down. No, he's saying, listen, if you don't, if you just run full speed ahead, if you burn your life, if you just keep striving for more and more and more, at some point, he's going to make you lay down. David experienced this multiple times. That's why he's saying this. This is from experience. That listen, it's, it's the wiring. It's the way you're made. It's the way you're supposed to operate. So at some point, if you keep running, God will make you lay down. And maybe some of you are in that right now. You're feeling that. My guess is some of you kind of look back in life and you can point to a season. And when you were in that season, what you would say in that season is that you would call it sickness. You would call it an accident. You would call it an unexpected layoff. You would call it something negative. But now when you look back, what you see is that the shepherd was making you lay down. What you see now is that God created a Sabbath. Now, maybe he didn't cause it, but he allowed it to be used for good and create a Sabbath for you because now you look back and you go, man, I needed that season. It's because I ran myself ragged <clears throat> and now this happened and now I'm able to just sit and rest in the shepherd and who he is. Why? Because what he ultimately wants for you is the replenishing of your soul. He wants to lead you by quiet waters. He wants to refresh, replenish your soul. He wants to renew your soul. And if it comes right down to it, as David says, he'll make you lay down because it's that important. It's that vital to your life that you stop, that you pause, that you rest so that the shepherd can renew you. You know, in the gospels, we see Jesus living according to these same rhythms. We see it over and over again. As a matter of fact, the gospel of Mark is kind of famous for being a very fast paced gospel. It's very, very quick. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I've often joked that it's the action movie of the four gospels um, because it's just, it's rapid. As a matter of fact, his favorite transition is immediately. Like it's just story to story to story to story. And it's not that Jesus is in a hurry, it's that Mark is in a hurry to tell the story of Jesus, okay? But what you see, even in kind of Mark's quickness, 
to tell this story, you still see him pause over and over and over time to, to make sure we see the rhythms of Jesus. In Mark 1, that Jesus pulls away. When there's a crowd outside the house, Jesus pulls away to go and be with God. In Mark 2 is when he talks about Sabbath and he, and he really kind of lays down the, the understanding of what the Sabbath means. But look at, look at this in, in Mark 6. What's happening here is this. It's a, it's a busy season in the sense that ministry stuff is happening. Like it's just like, man, the, the church is growing kind of thing. Like there's incredible things happening. He had just sent the disciples out two by two to go and minister, to cast out demons, to preach. Like he's... It, in, in terms of discipleship, he's kind of he's kind of letting them out of the nest a little bit, and he's like, "Hey, let's go try this thing on a little bit." And so they've been traveling and doing some ministry, and they come back, and everybody's a little bit tired, but there's this momentum building, right? There's a crowd of people outside, and the momentum's building. And what Jesus does not do, Jesus does not say, "Hey, listen, we got some great momentum happening right now." Like, this is incredible. I mean, what if we, what if we did this other thing and this new thing? There's a lot of people that, that need, have, have needs that need to be met. I don't have a lot of time. Listen, boys, we gotta dig in. We gotta push a little bit deeper. We gotta work a little bit harder. Like, come on, like this is the time. Like right now there's momentum. Let's do this thing. That's not what Jesus says. Look at what Jesus says in Mark 6. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. In the middle of what they could have easily thought, these 12 guys that were tired, but yet they're on the heels of just incredible ministry happening. They could have easily thought, you know what's next is dig in and work harder in Jesus. No, 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 that's not the way of the kingdom. No, 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 that's not the way of Jesus. That's not the way the father, that's not the way the rhythm of rest and renewal in God's kingdom works. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull away. And I just want you to come and spend some time with me. I want you to eat, I want you to rest. I want you to just have some downtime with me. And that's the invitation of Jesus to every single one of us. That's the invitation of Jesus for all of us every day. But for some of us here today, we desperately need that invitation. Maybe if you were to kind of zoom out on your life, you maybe would think that you've been running so hard, so fast, thinking everything depends on you and it's all about you. And you've got to work harder. You've got to do more. You've got to provide more. And you feel like you could be at the verge of, him making you lay down. Like you just feel like I'm just tapped out. I'm just, I'm at the end. I don't know that I've got anything left. And that's the invitation of Jesus for you today. Just come to me. Come to me all by yourself. Get alone with me and just rest. Because that's the rhythm of Jesus. That's his way. Last week, we talked about our new mission statement. As a church, this new season, it's just simply walking together as we pursue the way of Jesus. That's the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus is, is walking. It's not a quick, fast, hurry, hurried life, restless life, busy life. There's a pattern and there's a rhythm and that's the kind of life that Jesus invites us into. Let me pray for us. Lord, I just thank you that you are here, that you're with us. <clears throat> Lord, and I can feel in this moment right now, there are quite a few people that feel as though they're on the edge of burnout. They're on the edge of exhaustion. Whether it's in work, family, mix of both, maybe it's just the pace of life, or maybe it's striving, maybe it's trying to gain something or, or get something that they feel like they lack, whatever it is. Lord, I believe and I feel and I sense right now there are so many people that today are just on the verge of collapse. They're just tired. Emotionally just spent, mentally spent, physically spent. And then sometimes they just don't even know how, how they're gonna get up, how they're gonna keep going. And I just pray that today we can sense this invitation from you to just come with you and find rest. And I love that Jesus in this verse, the only prerequisite here, the only requirement is that we be tired. That's it. There's no other hoops to jump through. There's nothing else to, to perform. There's nothing else to do. We just simply have to be tired. And when we're tired, your invitation is to come and rest. And God, that's what we want today. We just wanna feel, sense, experience you today, God. God, that maybe you would inspire us to put in some new rhythms into our life. 
daily, weekly, yearly rhythms into our schedule, into our life, Lord, so that we can just simply begin to to depend on you, to trust you more and more. But Lord, I pray right now in this moment, in this room, that you would minister to us, that you would just fill us with your passion, with your love. God, that you would lead us into a place of rest, into a season of rest. That it's not just in a moment, it's not just in a, in, in a second, Lord, but it's, it's something we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to step into, we're gonna have to trust you by resting. And then in that, God, you're gonna renew and you're gonna restore and you're gonna refill. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you're leaving this experience excited, inspired by what God is doing in your life. And look, maybe you're ready to take a step. It could look like a decision to follow Jesus or getting prayer for something that's going on in your life. Or maybe it's just getting connected to our church and growing in community with other believers. We want to give you the opportunity to take that step right now. So look, there's a QR code coming up on your screen. Follow that link and let us connect with you. Because here's what we know. Watching or, or consuming content by itself is never going to do it when it comes to finding the life that God has for you. So we'd love to connect with you, get to know you a little bit more, but ultimately, let's grow together. Let's be a part of the church. And we can't wait to see you next time right here at City Hope Church.